Hello, Sawadika. Welcome to this uh, webinar on industry. I see people are progressively joining, so I let time for a participant to, to join, but welcome. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Justine De Guerre. I'm the executive director of the Franco Thai Chamber of Commerce. We'd like to welcome all of you uh, to this uh, webinar on Thailand Industry 4.0. Uh, I would like to thank our partners, which are uh, co-hosting this uh, webinar with us, of uh, NTCC, of the Swedish Chamber of Commerce, of the Spanish. Uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, sorry, Spanish Thai Chamber of Commerce and of the Singapore Thai Chamber of Commerce. So thank you to, to all these partners. Um, and after, of course, I uh, would like to thank our panelists that are going to share with you uh, today their, their vision on the Thailand uh, Industry 4.0. Um, they will uh, introduce uh, themselves uh, after, but I would like to thank uh, Mr. Kompong uh, Sutaka Tatul, uh, Investment Pro Promotion Officer and Senior, uh, senior Professional uh, uh, Level, uh, which is from the Thailand Board of Investment, a particular partner for the, the, the Franco Thai uh, Chamber. So we will present uh, to you the Thailand uh, 4.0 project. Uh, which is uh, really uh, pushed by BOI and the specific incentives on industry. As you know, uh, BOI has incentives on very various sectors uh, to promote and encourage uh, investors uh, to uh, come in Thailand. But today we'll have this uh, particular focus on industry. Uh, we chose to talk about this topic, uh, not only because we know that is a, a, a sector with business opportunities in Thailand, but we feel also uh, that a lot of uh, French companies are already uh, implemented in uh, Thailand uh, in the field of industry, but also we are in touch uh, with several other uh, companies that are uh, maybe today in France or in other countries in Asia and uh, looking for uh, uh, business development and business opportunities um, uh, uh, in Thailand. So uh, that's why we are glad to talk about this topic uh, today. And so to complete this presentation of uh, BOI, we, we thought it's always interesting uh, uh, to have very uh, practical uh, uh, cases and uh, testimonies and solutions proposed by our uh, uh, members, uh, companies that are members of the, the Franco Thai Chamber. So for that, we'll have first uh, Mr. Bruno Lepito, uh, Managing Director for Civeco China. Uh, he will present the digital, uh, digital twin solution solution and practical tool for maintenance solution. So we are thanking uh, Bruno, which is uh, in case, uh, in fact, at the moment uh, located in, uh, in, um, in China and he's uh, participating to this uh, webinar uh, with us. So thank you very much, uh, Bruno. And uh, last but not least, uh, the last uh, presentation will be done uh, by uh, Patrice. Oh, sorry, um, uh, Patrice will uh, be in fact before Bruno. But uh, Mr. Patrice Picheda, uh, which is the president of the Franco Thai Chamber of Commerce, but today he's not here uh, with this hat, shall I say. Uh, he is representing his company, uh, Asia. He's the Asia COO for ACOM. A French company, and he will present a, a solution also under towards industrial reliability for 4.0. So, with no further ado, I will let the floor to Kun Kan Pong, and at the end, I will come back for a conclusion. And of course, we'll take time for Q and A. So, don't hesitate progressively to write your questions in the in the chat box. Uh, and we will uh, answer at the end or take open uh, questions at the end. So thank you very much and uh, have a good session. You, you are mute, sorry. Kun Kan Pong, how Kun Kan Pong?
Thank you very much, Kun Justin, for the introduction. Uh, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please allow me to welcome you to this session. Uh, uh, I'm honored to be here today and talk on behalf of the Thailand Board of Investment on this topic of Thailand Board, uh, Thailand Board of Investment, BOI, and Thailand 4.0 transformation. So in today's session, I would like to take a little spin on how you know how we present ourselves? Uh, I'm gonna touch a little bit upon who we are, but then I'm I'm gonna move quickly to you know what we do to have uh, what we have to offer you as an organization for you to actually take a practical step toward you know upgrading yourself or taking advantage of all these opportunities and the situation you know to be more technologically advanced for you know more uh, efficiencies, uh, cost saving, cost effective e efficiency, and to you know thrive in this climate of the business in, in today's you know situation. So uh, today's uh, our our today's presentation will be divided into three parts. First, I would like to touch a little bit upon uh, you know Thailand at a glance and also who we are and general idea of how we do things in BOI to help investors do business in time. Then I'm gonna go to the demand side of things, you know, how we promote people uh, investing and in spending money to upgrade themselves to be more 4.0 or to have more efficiency. And also uh, the last part will be about people who are on the other side, who is the suppliers who are manufacturer of these technologies uh, what you what they will get from us to make it easier for them to do business. So without further ado, I'd like to touch a little bit upon Thailand. So a lot of you are already know Thailand, but uh, let me let me say it a little bit for our foreign friends. So Thailand is uh, you know we're has been known for uh, destination for tourist attraction and natures and everything, but we are one of the biggest economy within Southeast Asia with sixty. Six more than 66 million in population, you know, and GDP uh, almost the biggest in Southeast Asia. We also are very big in manufacturing and uh, <clears throat> and in business as well. We are ranked in the 12th biggest agricultural output and 19th biggest economy in terms of buy purchasing power. Also, we get number one in many products, you know, in today's you know. Uh, market as well, such as biodiesel, bioplastic. You know, uh, we also is the biggest automo automotive export, uh, producer and exporter in the Southeast Asian you know, uh, area with both the Japanese manufacturer and also the Western European uh, manufacturer as well. Apart from that, we are one of the biggest tourist attraction for medical services. In, uh, in Asia. Uh, we, we would like to think of ourselves as a country that locate at the heart of uh, Southeast Asian country. And we, you know, we enter into this many FTAs and agreements with our neighbors to build one of the biggest trade blocks in, consisting of 15 countries, you know, and consists of 30% of G world GDP and people in the world. So Thailand is the second largest economy in Southeast Asia. We have RCEP, ASEAN plus uh, China, Australia, Japan, and other countries as well. So uh, we do look to our, uh, we do look to this, uh, you know, being in Thailand as an opportunity as a springboard for you to do business and expand in this area, in this area. So with that, being said, you know, we are a hub of many major brands and industry uh, in the past 30, 40 years. And these are some of the big names that has been doing business and have been thriving in Thailand so far. You might see a lot of big name automotives has been establishing themselves in Thailand as a manufacturing hub along with their suppliers and, you know, supporting industry. We also have very big in smart electronics, hard disk drive, and petrochemical, and right now we are actually growing a lot in bio-based, you know, product as well, like um, bioplastic technology, that kind of stuff. 
apart from you know agricultural you know products that we have been leading uh, from many many years. So with that being said, let me take some time to introduce BOI. So BOI is uh, it stands for Thailand Board of Investment. We are a government agency responsible for uh, promoting investment in Thailand. Uh, we are under the office of the prime minister and our prime minister is the chair of the board of investment himself so our responsibility is to promote facilitate and help out with you know investor both from abroad and in thailand to do business in thailand and with that we have you know many tools including including tax and non-tax benefits which make it practical and possible for people uh, from abroad to do business in Thailand easily, you know, and also we have um, 16 foreign offices that will help out with the marketing effort and getting to know, you know, attracting and talking to investor and business people uh, all across the globe. As you can see, we have uh, in we have an office in Paris, Frankfurt, Stockholm. Uh, actually, I have just been uh, on a trip to Stockholm just last week before this, you know, uh, before this event. So a very exciting opportunity for Thailand after the COVID-19 is being fade away, uh, is fading away. And we are excited for, you know, more investment and more business in the future. So to be on a practical side, what we have to offer for business and what everyone is talking about a lot is that BOI give tax and non-tax benefit. On the tax side, we can give up to eight to 13 years of corporate income tax exemption. So you can do business tax-free for a long, long time. Uh, and we give that on a project by project basis as well. Meaning if you have extension project, you can come back to us and they apply for eight to 13 years of tax exemption, you know, again, but, but those are uh, those opportunity depends on the types of business as well, as I will describe later down the line. So corporate income tax exemption, uh, import duty exemption for machinery and raw material. So in the sense, we can turn your land into like uh, an equivalent to a free zone for you so for you to do business and you know feel like you're in the free zone and manufacture and re-export. Make Thailand as an uh, ex export hub for your, uh, you know, for, for your company. And also just recent years, we, you know, we want to move toward more technology driven products. So we have new laws and we have fund to give grants for people who do R&D or advanced training program within Thailand as well. So uh, that, those are the tax incentive side uh, for non-tax incentives. Actually, I would like to stress on some of these points, uh, including actually the, the top the top one. Uh, for a lot of business that uh, want to do, a lot of foreign companies that want to do business in Thailand, uh, sometimes they're stuck with this foreign business law and they will hear a word of like holding 49% maximum of their company, which make things a little complicated uh, to, to expand and do, to actually do business in Thailand. For those services, uh, if you, <clears throat> for, for some of those services, if you get BOI, we can allow you, and we can practically allow you to, you know, own the majority share and, and operate as a hundred percent foreign company in Thailand. To be more specific, those are you know a lot of services that fall into like list two or list three of the Foreign Business Act. So, you know, if you talk about uh, do warehousing, do uh, digital services, system integrators, you know, generally you have to hold like a minority share in company, but with BOI, you can operate as a foreign company freely in Thailand. And also we can allow you to buy land for your operation, get off some headache about, you know, having to lease land and take that extra risk. And also we can give you facilitation in terms of uh, visa and work permit, getting your expert and your team to be in Thailand easier and on the practical side, I can uh, a lot of you can testif testify to this that it's it's very important, especially for startups or small company that would like to bring like five ten people to Thailand uh, and grow very fast. Uh, we can help you do that very easy compared to you know 
the, uh, the general route. With all those good things, we group these incentives, both tax and non-tax together, and divide them into different kinds of packages. Uh, and it's given based on you know, the types of business you do in Thailand. So these are some of the general requirements. I won't go into the details much, but the uh, general idea is that we generally give promotion to uh, a new project, meaning you come and apply and then you import the machine afterward to invest. And the uh, promotion is given on uh, activity-based incentives, meaning like it depends on the types of things you produce or the service you provide uh, that will decide uh, what kind of, what level incentives you will get. And, uh, you know, we are talking about activity-based, so uh, don't be scared by that. Uh, we have been here very, a, a long time, and currently we have more than uh, 400 types of businesses that we promote from agricultural, you know, food processing to automotives, automotive parts, to chemicals, to even services like hotel, uh, you know, R&D, engineering design, uh, you know, energy consultancy, or even uh, international headquarter has been among our, you know, top priority for, for a promotion. So in short, uh, this slide, which just to tell you that if you do business in Thailand, this, we would like to encourage you to come and talk to us and, you know, uh, to see what uh, we can do for you. So those are the general idea of who we are. And uh, as we say, today is all about, you know, going toward, you know, digitalization, being more efficient, uh, Thailand 4.0. So uh, from our perspective, uh, we were very determined to, you know, be a part of this transformation. And we give promotion based on that as well. And I would like to, you know, divide this into two sides. One is on demand side and one for supply, supply side. For demand side, generally we talk about, you know, how can we help the people who invest money, put on money to upgrade themselves, how to make it easier. For supply side, we're talking about people who provide this, you know, service or product or manufacturing robots or systems to make it happen. So we have both packages uh, for both sides to make a complete picture of this transformation. So, okay. Uh, all right, so first let's talk about, uh, you know, how can we help people buy this system or invest in this transformation? We all know that, uh, you know, investing in upgrading your system is a risky thing, is a costly thing. It, it requires money and, you know, it's, you know, it requires a leap of faith a little bit in the system. So we are here to help with this so-called uh, efficiency enhancement measures. And with this, we, you know, we help buyer of the system to make it easier, get money back for, in terms of tax exemption. And we cover many aspects of these uh, upgrades from energy conservation, the use of uh, alternative energy, or use robo uh, robotics, automation system, digitalization, or R&D, or upgrade to get uh, certification or stand international standard. So the general idea of how we help buyers of this system uh, is that on the demand side, uh, the general package, the general idea of how we do things is that we give you 50 to 100% back in terms on the investment amount in terms of tax exemption on your existing project, meaning you might, uh, this package is for people who, is, who, is cur who are currently doing business in Thailand, paying tax, and they want to upgrade their stuff. Then they put up a project, say, I'm going to invest 10 million in robotics to make, it e to make it better. Then we give you 50% of that 10 million back, 5 million, right? In terms of tax break that you can use for three years. So it's like we, we help you pay for it half of it. Uh, you know, to make it better, uh, to make it easier for you to decide. 
So the criteria, general criteria is that um, for people who can be eligible to this, they, the existing project must be among the 400 types of business we are promoting. And, we're, and they are not enjoying the current tax benefit from us, or they have to wait until the existing tax benefit is done. So what does it mean for this in the, in the larger scheme of things? So it means that we help you pay and make it cheaper for you to invest up to 50 or 100% of the cost of investment in these upgrades. And shorter payback period, of course, and less risk for you to try new things in your system. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, next slide. And as I say, there are, we cover many, many areas in the upgrades. And I would like to pick some of these to highlight to you today. So the first one is energy efficiency on uh, machine upgrades and robotics. On this, up, on this package, you get, um, there, there's a lot of text here, but generally the heart of it is that you get 50%, uh, you get back 50% in terms of tax exemption. That you can be that you can use in three years, you know, uh, and also you uh, for machine upgrades, and if you use auto automation or robotics, and you use thirty and thirty percent of that robotics come from Thai suppliers or Thai manufacturer, you can get up to hundred percent of that investment back in terms of CIT exemption in three years, so that's a pretty good deal. So uh, for this, um, you have to apply within this year. To be, to be eligible. And you have to post a KPI and details of the system that you're gonna be doing for us to see whether it's enough for automation or not, but uh, whether it falls into this category or not. The next is that we, 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 get a lot, um, we get a lot of application and robotics and we start to think that, say it's not only the hard, hardware that can help people be more efficient, but the software as well. So, we just issue this, this so-called digitalization package, where, which means that if you upgrade your software within the company, use software, uh, digital system to you know, upgrade your efficiency, then you can get 50% back uh, in front of tax, in, uh, tax exemption in three years. And there are three types of digitalization. You know, and you can read for yourself and basically say that it's a requirement of some sophistication. You have to link uh, at least three types of uh, you know, working station within three function within your company, like ERP, advanced ERP, that links production with sales, with, uh, man with, with uh, general you know, management, that kind of stuff. Or you use AI, big data, or you link with the national e-payment system. Idea is that you put in effort in digitalization, you get 50% back in tax exemption. The next one, and this one has been very popular. Um, actually, this, this one is quite popular. It's about, especially these days that the cost of energy is, you know, being more and more expensive. So this one, if you replace your machinery to be, you know, to save costs of the energy use and get 50% back in terms of tax exemption as well. The criteria is that say that uh, we, we just set some criteria that you have to you know save enough money of uh, save enough cost to you know compensate for that uh, tax exemption. Uh, yeah, as as stated here. The next one is uh, alternative energy. This one is the most popular. Uh, if you're in Thailand, you see a lot of solar rooftop, and I can say that a lot of that is driven by this package. Uh, you get fifty percent back on the solar system. Uh, bring down seven seven years of payback period to three and a half, three and a half year tax uh, of payback period, which generally quite a good deal, quite a good IRR to consider, right? So, uh, I think this is an example of how we dr drive the, the industry itself to go green. And uh, this year we issue a new uh, industry four point zero. This one is a mix of hardware and software. And, you know, they set some target in terms of, you know, uh, sophistication and how you, uh, things you, you have to achieve. But the idea is that it's the same idea, but you get up to 
of tax exemption. So if you use it all, it means that we pay, we help you pay for the whole thing to upgrade yourself and be more profitable. This one, uh, if you're interested, you can check it out. So those are uh, a practical side of how we help buyers upgrade their system. And I think a lot of you can, can relate to that, uh, you know, uh, in terms of purchasing new systems. And uh, I think if you have questions, you can uh, definitely contact me for more information. On the other side, we talk about supply side, which means that we help people who provide service to build this system and sell to customers. And uh, for this, we promote on a project by project basis and depends on the types of products that you make that we decide how many years of tax exemption you get. But the general idea is that we give you corporate income tax exemption. We give you uh, a custom tax exemption for machine machinery and raw materials for re-export and non-tax benefit. Like you can buy land for your, for your factory. And to give you some example, these are some of the category that might be, you know, relevant to, to, uh, you know, 4.0 provider, I would say, like uh, people who make robotics and system integrators for, you know, automations or might fall into this category and get A1 package, eight years of tax exemption with no limit, plus other exemption on import duty and non-tax benefits. For general machine builders, you get A3, meaning five years. For machine assembler, meaning they don't produce parts, they just assemble it and test it and sell it, they get uh, three years of tax exemption. Also, we also, uh, also we promote a more technical side of things, uh, such as the design, engineering design, uh, microelectronic design, embedded soft, uh, system design, or even ESCO. You know, if you talk about 4.0, there has been a rise of this uh, business model where you go talk to your client, invest in the system to help them save money. Then you have an agreement to you know share the save the money uh, revenue on the on the saving you make for them. So that's called ESCO, and we give A1, meaning eight years of, of, the, of the revenue that you get from that activity should be tax-free. Yeah, so, and these are some of the, you know, we, we, uh, some of the description of A1, A2, A3 I just described. So uh, I'll leave this for the reference. And uh, uh, so you don't have to be scared about, you know, all this information. So. Uh, in short, I would like to, you know, remind you that we promote both the buyers of this system and the seller provider of the system to make, you know, to make this transformation easier and more financially practical. Also, we realize that it's important for people to actually be in Thailand in the first place to, you know, drive this forward. So. Uh, we are actually in the process of launching this new program called uh, LTR. Uh, this one is a little different than what I talked before. It's basically just 10 years visa with re-entry permit, and you can work with a uh, you know, work permit in Thailand. And this can be extended to your spouse and kids as well, up to four, four spouses and, uh, spouse and kids, children. Uh, to be in Thailand to to help build the system to make things work, so uh, I we expect it to be in Q3 to to be fully launched and you can you know bring your staff and expert to come and work in Thailand uh, on on this system. So I, I guess that will be all on the BOI side, and I'll leave some of the information. You can scan the this this presentation through the QR code, and also if you have a specific question. And you would like to, you know, talk about specific stuff uh, in your project. Say you have someone approaching you, want to make, want to actually see whether it's eligible or not, how much money you will get back uh, on this system. You can book a, a BOI online clinic system via this link as well. So uh, I guess we have a limit time, so I'll, I'll leave it as this, and uh, we can have a Q and A afterward. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Kun uh, Kampon, for this very uh, complete conversation. Yeah, we'll go for uh, questions maybe at the at the end of the the session. But so, yeah, thank you. It was a uh, uh, very complete. So now is uh, uh, I will let, let the floor to Mr. Patrice Picheda, so the CEO of Acoem. He will uh, talk to us about uh, towards uh, industry uh, four point uh, reliability four point zero. So thank you, uh, Patrice. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Tori Hap. Um, my name is Patrice. I'm the CEO of um, Aquem um, Asia. Um, so um, it's a delight to, uh, to be here today with you. And it's also a delight to, to pass just after Kun Kompon because he said a very interesting thing that will relate directly to uh, um, the subsequent presentations. Um, I hope Emma, you can also see my screen. Is that okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, so my presentation will be um, divided basically in two parts. I will first uh, talk about um, Industry 4.0, uh, what it means uh, according to the, the German definition because it started in Germany. Um, and um, uh, the, the step to, to go into this transformation that Konpon uh, has mentioned is now held by the BOI um, in terms of digitalization as well, um, or to try to succeed into that for an application of reliability uh, of machine, to make sure the machine runs smooth and uh, at save energy as well and save components. So reduce the carbon impact, basically. <clears throat> so quick intro about ACOM. Um, we have four main um, uh, sectors of activity. Uh, so today I will focus on the industrial reliability part, uh, where we propose solution to uh, to help monitor machine to uh, improve uh, their health. Uh, the other one, which is very applicable to Thailand, we are very active, is emission and process and ambient monitoring. So we provide air pollution noise monitoring and noise monitoring system for cities, airports, uh, BC, uh, BMA, PCD in Thailand. But um, that will be for another, another presentation. Uh, we chose Thailand uh, for the very reason that was presented before to be our um, our main office in Asia, uh, center of Southeast Asia, easy to uh, travel in non-COVID times. Um, uh, very good potential in terms of business as well, to be clear. Uh, so we have uh, the company itself is 850 people worldwide, 150, 150 million euro turnover at Coem. And uh, we have a free location actually uh, in Asia beside Thailand. We have uh, one, of, uh, one office in KL and one office in um, Shanghai. So I'll come back a bit later to about uh, what we do at Aqua for reliability, but uh, let's start first by Industry 4.0. So Industry 4.0, everybody has heard about it, everybody has its own definition, but basically uh, if you look at this illustration, I hope it's moving on the screen. <laughs> um, the first industrial revolution was in the late 18th century by uh, steam and water power. Then came in the late 1900s, uh, early 20th, uh, century uh, mass pollution, well, Ford, you can see Ford uh, T on the on, on the illustration, electricity. Uh, then for the people about my age, we live through the, the third uh, industrial revolution, automation and computers. And uh, today um, it's what we call the digital revolution uh, and uh, the use of cyber physical systems um, that uh, we are in. So, um, what does it exactly mean? So, um, globally speaking, it's about all about data exchange um, and uh, centralizing data. So that's the whole idea about data lake. So data exchange and technology and processes within the manufacturing industry. So you have, uh, you heard about all these terms. IoT in the industry, we talk about about IoT as well, Internet of Things. Uh, the cyber physical system, which is hybrid between computers and uh, human information, the smart manufacturing, the smart factory, cloud computing, something which is a bit less um, uh, used commonly is called collective computing, which is the use of a computerized model to simulate the human thought process in a complex situation. Um, computers are obviously faster than human at calculating, 
but they have yet to master some tasks. We are still useful. <laughs> and um, understanding the natural language, especially. So the whole idea is to make sure that we create artificial intelligence and machine learning to use both the expertise of humans and to feed into the computer model to make better decision. So everybody thinks about manufacturing, uh, obviously, when you talk about uh, Industry 4.0, but it's also um, Industry 4.0 also applied to uh, design the supply chain and commercialization, putting the deliverable into the into uh, 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 the business. So um, the, the key achievement was a shift from mass production to mass customization. I mean, instead of doing things all the same, talk about for the, the 4T before, we are able to design systems which are tailored to the needs of people. So uh, we are not anymore in, like as I mentioned, the 4T. Uh, you can have in any color as soon as it's black. It's not the case anymore. We are really in a world where we can provide to people, to the industry, something which is adapted to their needs. Now, if I talk about the four pillars of Industry 4.0, um, basically it's all about information. Interconnection means that um, sensor device people, software have to be able to communicate and um, provide data. Information transparency means that the data collected uh, has to be available to everyone that, uh, that need to make a decision and that will be able to use it. Uh, technical assistance is more about providing data with meaning. A data row is just a data. So you put a sensor on a machine, it gives you a name, for, it gives you a level. What do I do with that? So today we go beyond that. We go towards validated data, added value data, diagnosis, and help in decision making, which is goes to the last uh, topic, decentralized decision, where the system need to be able to make their own decision and take autonomous action to a certain level. Say for 90% of the case on the machine, the system should be able to tell the maintenance crew what they have to do on the machine. Uh, add some oil, do alignment, uh, do a balancing, change a uh, rubber bearing next time. Of course, the 10% left are still not reachable because we're talking about cyber physical system and interconnection of people and computers. Uh, so that's where what we talk about decentralized solution. If we go back in the past uh, and look at what happened to our uh, personal devices, again, as many of you, we live through that. We have a mobile phone, we have a, a game console, we have a, uh, a GPS, uh, we have a camera. Everything went into one thanks to um, open operating system. So an open, open operating system means that you can have different specialized apps living on the same platform to make decisions. And this was a big step towards Industry 4.0 because we, we were reaching this interconnectivity that I mentioned before, where we could get data and info from a lot of different machines, sensors, humans, uh, process, put them all in one, system all in one data lake as well to make decision. So um, we have to go through the step to go to bring a steel proposal into your factory. So basically uh, the steps are in a number of five. You have to first identify the pain point and set goals. Second, explore the possibilities and prioritize project then adopt the solution, then measure result, and then optimize. Sounds simple. It is not simple, as we'll see that there have been a lot of uh, failure along the way by underestimating um, what each step meant and what each step challenges will be and how to try to overcome them. It's a long process. That's the first thing we have to decide. I remember a discussion with uh, the, the FTI's chairman and, and board and the vice chairman not long ago, the Federation of the Industry. You cannot jump from Industry 2.5 or Industry 3.0 or even Industry 3.5, the intermediate step into 4.0 and say, oh, tomorrow we'll be there. It's a process. You have to go step by step and you have to adapt 
can choose the first quick win that you can get into it. So people can adapt to it and people can welcome this new technological revolution. So the challenges, how to over and how to overcome them. So uh, that, uh, data is only, uh, is only valid as soon as we can prove the source. So this is come from, being from a McKinsey uh, study um, from um, quite, quite recently, I think three years ago, uh, that found that 61% of the industry 4.0 project fell. Why? Well, first, the lack of focus. As I mentioned, recorded data is only valuable and reliable as it reflects the real process. It's not just putting sensor on machine thing, sensor everywhere that will give you, uh, transform you into 4.0. It's the data you get from them and the usefulness of the data you get from them. Um, the data has to reflect the real processes and that's very important to, to, to understand, which is why also in the same study mentioned that 85% of the data science projects failed as well. Everybody talks about big data or data lake, as I mentioned before, big data is only important as soon as you have useful data, basically, or else it's just a waste of carbon use because more data you store, more carbon you use. The second one was uh, insufficient involvement of employees on the production floor. You need to get uh, people to, um, accept and adapt and adopt the, the, what you're putting in place. Um, anyone who has already worked in production knows how cumbersome day-to-day -day work can be if the IT system or if the processes are not harmonized. So it's important to make sure that you develop this with the involvement of your teams uh, and the adoption of your team and they understand where you try to go. And last was, the lack of follow-up, the lack of continuous improvement. Industry 4.0 transformation is a very good example of an agile program. You have to go step by step. You have to adapt and to change when something doesn't work. So to do that, you have to be able to um, have regular checks on the progress you've done, on what you've done, what works, what doesn't, okay? Uh, because if not, um, you will um, you will go for very long and complicated projects that will increase your costs. The master will not be respected. So continuous improvement from lean management and agile uh, agile mindset, I will say, is extremely important. Okay. So if you want the source, uh, we can provide it. It's a uh, McKinsey uh, Industry 4.0 Global Expert Survey from 2018. So now, what will be the keys to success? Well, mention it again, I've said it five times already, but collect relevant and high quality data. Don't just collect data to collect data. Second one is understand the process, domain application to leverage efficiently the new technology, whether it be artificial intelligence, machine learning, and whatever. So lots of data equals insights. And what we want is insightful data, insightful information to make the right decision and to improve the process. That's the whole idea about industry 4.0. Again, recorded data is only valuable and reliable if it reflects a real process. Many of our large customers in Europe have implemented data lakes uh, infrastructure, but they still need domain specialist um, as us, for example, in reliability, to make sense of the data available. Uh, because more data you collect, uh, but you have nobody to understand what it means, means that you will not get any proper decision taken if you don't have these insights. Let's go back to the illustration that uh, I mentioned before. So one operating system, but a specialized application interconnected, communicating, specialized application. So in your everyday life, you don't use the same app to go on social media, to go and watch video, or to exchange uh, information, video, chat, and so on. Uh, so and phone is a very good example of a common platform with specialized app interconnected. And that's exactly what you want to replicate 
in the initial work. I'm checking the time. Okay. So now I've explained a bit the whole concept about industry 4.0. What does it mean for machine reliability? So this is an example of what we're doing. We, we get data, okay? Again, data, I've been saying that many, many times today. So it can be vibration, alumni, noise, air, whatever. Industrial data. We don't provide the data as they are. We have system providing through edge and cloud computing, and expert people taking this information, transforming into insights. And to do, and with this insight, we get actions that can be proposed. Quick example, machines are not running properly. Uh, I want to know uh, if I need to change something on the machine. The system will be able to provide the data. Our edge computing will be able to give you um, analysis and it will tell you in at the next time you have the you will have a, a maintenance or program maintenance please change the bearing on this machine because we have a wear into this or it will be a please do a balancing on this machine not just getting data getting what you have to do on the machine to make it more reliable so our dna basically is to deliver actionable data not only the raw data. So basically we pro provide a full uh, range of um, uh, data capture solution uh, to get the information again. Um, usually on machines, when you do go for reliability, um, we have a, you have to assess the crit criticability sorry, of a machine. Um, more critical than a machine, more often you want to have information on the machine. So it can be sometimes once a year, which is not very often. For non-critical machine, we talk mainly about one month, once a month. Um, we have new IoT systems that are able to be put on machine to get data automatically every day. Or for very critical machine, we can have real-time data that will send alarms, automatic alarm to process system to say, well, wait, something happened to this machine, we have to do something now, okay? Uh, the idea is to slow follow the trend and to understand what it, what it means. So to do that, we have a, a, a full range of solutions, as I mentioned, from a tablet -based system to a data collection, to a wireless online and to pure wild, wired system. And all these are beyond them, artificial intelligence able to provide early diagnosis, early insights into what happened to your machine. But actually, it goes more. Um, it goes to more to that. So basically, we so we um, we we can take an example of uh, one of our large customer in uh, in France, uh, oil and gas customer, French. I'm not going to say the name, but I think everybody knows who it will be. <laughs> um, uh, they try to deploy um, a large range of uh, sensor to the machine at the very beginning of uh, when the IoT uh, went out to make some of vibration on the machine. Uh, the choice was made purely to be um, a tryout, but they get the system which were not providing the right info because the sensor has to be good enough to provide the right info. I'm not going to go into, go into technical here, but uh, basically you cannot get the right info if the, the sensor you have doesn't make the right measurement. Uh, so they were very limited in what they could measure and they never managed to get insightful information. So that's important to make sure that when you choose something, you know clearly about the limitation and what you want to have to make measurement of to make to get the right um, data. And also um, understand very well what you call the total cost of ownership, because so often people will buy an IoT sensor and then they don't realize that they have to change the battery every month, which at the end of the year will cost them three times the cost of the sensor. Or that the sensor is actually not durable enough to make a measurement for more than one year. Uh, so total cost of ownership is extremely important when you want to do reliability. And this is a true story, obviously. 
So our um, industrial um, ecosystem uh, 4.0 uh, consists of a dashboard, basically, a pre implementized platform where we can collect data with aquarium acquisition system that go into uh, uh, industry 4.0 ecosystem uh, with terms like Delta Lake, I mentioned CNMS, uh, which are software doing asset management. I think Bruno will talk about that because that's their specialty, automation. Um, we have providing as well service advisors. So uh, that goes beyond the automation and uh, the cloud computing and the machine learning. We uh, also provide um, remote diagnosis expert uh, to do measurement. So we have sustainable that we can put in the hand of uh, uh, people with not much knowledge or reliability or vibration to make measurement. And they put that in the cloud and they will get the, the diagnosis uh, pretty much within 24 hours uh, to know what to do. So that's been a very big trend during COVID and following COVID because we see people that want really want to go into um, into this as they don't want to give access to people to go and make measurement in their premises as it's very more and more difficult to hire qualified um, engineers in the field of reliability and vibration. So uh, we provide not only the system, we provide the data and report. Sorry. Um, and something to add to that um, is that um, we are moving with Industry 4.0 from a world of CAPEX to a world of OPEX. Mean that there's more and more incentive and more and more willingness for companies to spend operational expenses rather than invest in system, unless they are under the BOI scheme, obviously. Um, so today we have shifted as well and to from a model where we sell system to a model where we provide insight and data and diagnosis. It means that we have yearly uh, multi-year contract or monthly contract sometimes with our customer to provide them the data, the information, and we manage everything for them. They don't have to worry about spending or investing. It's just a data providing uh, solution. No, if I go back to the four pillars, basically that's what I mentioned. Um, we are totally interconnected as we use a state-of-the-art protocol like OPC UA, uh, transparent all data and insight automatically from our system. And um, we provide assistance and AI assistance and human assistance. So what do we mean by AI supervised learning? Basically, that's what I approached before. Uh, machine learning uh, is only good as um, it's learning from its mistakes. Uh, basically, the way to do machine learning, uh, uh, the machine learn from the specialist experience, diagnosis given by human. Okay, so that's what we call supervised, supervised learning. So we have a team of uh, experts around the world in the location you've seen here. Uh, and soon to be in Thailand because we are the application for BOI uh, Taizo to do the same thing in Thailand uh, to provide the supervised learning to make sure that our AI system, which we call Accurex, uh, that use Bayesian and uh, neural network technologies, learn from the expert and learn from qualified diagnosis. So we improve continuously, continuously, sorry, our AI based on the expert diagnosis that we have in house. And that goes back to the cyber physical system where we have a combination of both computing, edge computing, big data, but also very importantly, expert diagnosis. And that goes with even another step, what we call the smart anomaly detection. Um, we are now modelizing the reference behavior according to process data and vibration data to detect abnormal deviation of the global behavior compared to uh, the learning phase of a machine. There's, that means that usually when we make um, reliability diagnosis, we, uh, we um, have to define alarms, thresholds to know when to, stand, when to send an alarm, when to say there's something wrong with the machine. That has been done manually usually. Today, thanks to this machine learning and smart technology detection that we're developing, you could put 
the machine inside. Uh, you get the machine to run for some time, and the system will automatically know what's normal behavior, learn from that, and will by itself decide to know what is an abnormal deviation to make an alarm and to improve your reliability. So that's what we call the smart anomaly detection, and that's the next step of AI and machine learning for us. So basically, if we look, uh, I will provide, we'll provide a, a holistic industry 4.0 answer offer uh, from portable system to automated data logger, wired or wireless, Acurex, IDOS, the diagnostic AI for all operator range, machine learning infrastructure for big data. And we work with companies, uh, we work on digital twin as well, but that will be expanded a little bit in, uh, by uh, Bruno in his uh, global digital twin presentation after. Uh, I was born on the structural um, digital twin. And we've been doing this for 85 years now, 55 years. Um, so basically we deliver 24 seven ability, usually about 30% saving on maintenance, operational efficiency and improved safety. Conclusion, um, industry 4.0 comes with both challenges and new opportunities. So the challenges and opportunity have to be tabled and what is important is to know your processes and organization, to find the best adaptive solution to your plans, bring all your organization on board and quantify and report to win big. Um, that was my conclusion, but I will add just one thing because um, Quinpon addressed two important things for all of you listening today. Um, the world transformation to in, into Industry 4.0 and the world digitalization um, is eligible to BOI incentive if you, uh, if you apply. And so everything you've seen about transforming reliability to reliability 4.0 using the right tool, using new software, uh, investing in the right machines, uh, getting data, uh, getting software, uh, getting insights is, from my understanding, uh, uh, directly uh, directly applicable to uh, what the BOI wants to help promoting in Thailand. That's my part. I thank you very much. I try to be on time. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Patrice. So Thank you for this complete presentation. And I think we have all understood that the quality of the data is key also. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, sorry, uh, Bruno, we are a bit ahead of the time, but I think it will be OK uh, uh, for you. So uh, uh, now, Bruno uh, Lopito, the, the floor is yours uh, for, for Steve Echo. Thank you. Thank you, Swadika, uh, Sabadimai. It's you should be able to see my screen now. It's it's a great um, it's a great pleasure to uh, for me to speak about um, to speak to you after uh, Kun Kampon and Kun uh, Patrice. Um, I, I try to take today's topic to um, let's say it's maybe next logical step, which is a practical implementation and kind of wrap up uh, today's uh, session before the Q and A. Um, as you can see on this. Um, on the screen, I put here a picture, an image with people in it. And indeed, and it was said a little bit earlier by, by Patrice, indeed, people are too often forgotten in uh, Industry 4.0 projects. So that's, that will be one of my themes uh, today. But, but first, um, why am I talking to you today? And why am I talking from China? I'm, I'm calling from, from Shanghai. Um, well, just to say, I'm, I'm, um, I wear multiple hats, like, 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 like most people actually, and I, I, you can see on the screen what, what I do in life, but I, I think it, this will help explain why, why I speak as I do uh, to, today. And in particular, I've been dealing with something called industry of the future. Um, I, I, will, I, will, uh, I will explain what it is. Uh, but generally I've been in this field, the field of, of uh, maintenance digitalization, or asset management digitalization in Asia uh, since the late 1990s. Uh, I've lived in Asia for 25 years, most of the time in China. Um, so whatever I share today is grounded in, uh, in reality, uh, our reality in, in Asia. Um, so I spent a lot of time in your beautiful country of Thailand. Um, 
not so much in the past two years due to uh, COVID constraints. Uh, I did projects there uh, originally in the late 1990s, a long time ago, and then again in the past few years, I, I got I got to travel a lot to Thailand for for projects. So I mentioned industry of the future. I just have one one slide and a few comments about about this. Industry of the future is the French version of Industry 4.0. Um, and, and let me use this to try to close the, the debate, uh, maybe on, on what is 4.0. As you know, in different countries, different companies, depending on everyone's own background, um, industry 4.0 sometimes is, is being criticized or, or misunderstood. And the most common debate is, is on whether today we are at 3.0 or 2.0, are we ready? Can we jump one generation, etc.? And and the other thing is 4.0 sounds like a software version, and and perhaps this name overemphasizes IT. Um, so the, the French government has answered this uh, in in I think a true French way, and I think in a way which is very suitable for us in Asia, um, with industry of the future. So industry of the future is a national strategic initiative. Uh, to, to modernize the production based uh, and to transform the business models of companies. And that's very much like Thailand 4.0. It does not overemphasize software in the, in the name of it, it's just industry of the future. It doesn't overemphasize the current status of this or that company. It sets a direction. We agree on the direction, but every company have its own pain, need, constraint, current situation, and we need to take a practical steps and adjust on, on the way. Um, so that, that's the point. And, and uh, at the same time, uh, industry of the future takes environmental and regulatory compliance into account. I'll come back to that later, of course, it's very important. I, I won't go deeper into this now. I'm, I'm not working for the French government, but, but I wanted to, to express this and, and close the debate around 4.0 uh, uh, by, by talking about industry of the future. So today I try to answer the, the question, if we know the direction of the future, how do we get there? Um, well, you know, most, uh, 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 most 4.0 projects fail. Uh, I think Kunpratri said 61% failure according to McKinsey. And by the way, I, I, I met uh, the CEO of a company, the Asia CEO of a company re recently, uh, a few, few weeks ago, a big French multinational with plants all over Asia. And they, they told me they actually used the opportunity of COVID-19, the COVID-19 crisis to stop their industry 4.0 project because they have been running for many years with no results and just you know, consultants from producing reports. Uh, uh, and actually, the consultants, a very big consulting firm, not McKinsey, but you know, one of those big firms, used the McKinsey report, the one that says 61% failure, as an excuse for failure. Basically, they say, you know, you know, most 4.0 projects fail anyway. But why do they fail? And one reason I put I put here on the picture, one reason, a very visual reason, is that the reality of what is delivered never looks like like this, like what you see on the screen. You know, vendors sell a dream, magic, and, and in the industry, we care about reality. And, and when we don't, we like magic as well. We like fancy things, but when we don't take, uh, take care of the reality, you know, it come back, comes back to our face anyway. Um, so that's one reason it doesn't work. You know, if you promise uh, something that cannot be done. The other, let, let me go a little bit deeper into, into this and another way to look at it, um, as I said, if, if we know the direction, how, how do we get there? And, and, but do we know the direction? So what problem do you want to solve? Too many 4.0 projects or digital twin projects or, or IoT projects, whatever, have no direction, no clear objectives. Uh, it's, it's just magic or anyway, something that they call proof of concept. You know, you experiment and see what you can get. Now, what you see here is the result of, of surveys and, and audits we have done with uh, uh, some of them with Shanghai University. Uh, uh, and I won't explain it in detail, but, but what you see here is that, what it says is that uh, 4.0 projects, um, what they ach usually achieve, uh, which is on the, on the right here, 
is often totally mismatched with the needs of companies. And that's why they fail. Maybe the system is working, but it doesn't achieve uh, what is needed. So let me, let me take a little break here to, to briefly explain what, what my company does. Um, so you can see here, we, we help infrastructures, we help industrial plants in Asia to optimize their asset life cycle, their equipment life cycle, to control the technical risk, to ensure regulatory compliance. So I will touch on all these topics. And we, how do we do this? We do this by combining what we call smart operational maintenance solutions. You could call it digital twin for o &M, uh, and a consulting approach based on, uh, among others, based on the standard named ISO 55000, which is the asset management standard. Um, you see on the, on the right, we have lots of customers. Uh, we are the largest in China in this field. We have business all over, all over Asia and the world from, from, from China. Uh, we are part of a group, a French group. Um, I, won't, I won't talk too much about, about all this. Uh, we, we don't work alone. And in particular in Thailand, um, we have an, an ecosystem of partners and clients. Uh, I, I won't go through all of these, but um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to have a cooperation project with uh, Sri Lanka University, the, the, their School of Integrated Innovation. And they have students working with us on projects and they, and they have our platform available in the, in the school. And that's an example, it's a very good example for us of uh, ecosystem partner. You can see our, our Thai, uh, Thailand based clients here at the, at the bottom of the, of the screen. Uh, I, will, I will talk about them. I will use some of them as, as case studies today. And uh, we have somehow a virtual office in Thailand with our local partners. And I used to have people traveling back and forth quite a lot and myself. Uh, uh, is virtual in the sense that we have not set up a company yet. It has been delayed by COVID-19 for two years now. Uh, it's about to change. Uh, and thanks, thanks BOI for this as well. Um, so that, that's all for the company, uh, for the company talk. But so, so what do we do? And, and it, that brings me to the, to the, to the, to, to the topic really. Um, so I said, we, we kind of execute uh, maintenance 4.0 or smart ONM projects. Uh, uh, how do we do this successfully? But uh, our approach uh, is to combine, is to use industrial expertise. We are industrial experts uh, rather than IT experts. And, and in particular, we use a methodology which we designed based on the ISO 55000 asset management standard, which is a, an international standard, fairly recent international standard. We, we use this methodology to successfully deliver technological solutions for, for maintenance. Um, by the way, our systems, and you will see screenshots, I'm not going to promote and describe our systems, but our systems are available in, in Thai language, of, of course. Now, you could look at this that way. Uh, um, the, the, I, switched, I switched the picture a little bit, okay? You, you, you could say we use technology to deliver improvement as well, or you can say we use uh, an industrial methodology to deliver system. It works both ways and these two aspects of the business come together very, very tightly. So ISO 55000, um, ISO 55000 is the asset management standard. It, to, to explain briefly, it, it takes or it gives a risk-based, an industrial risk-based approach to maintenance improvement. And my company has kind of translated this standard in five practical steps. And I was very interested to see, interesting to see that Patrice also has five steps and they're quite similar. Uh, uh, but uh, we have, based on a lot of experience, we have refined this uh, for, for practical steps. And, and this is what we use uh, in, all, in all our projects. And I will, I will explain these steps and then I will show you some, some examples in Thailand. And first step is to define a strategy. You know, that, that's the direction I was talking about and, and your goals based on your company's own needs and pains and constraints, the budget constraints, the, the, the people constraints and so on. Then you have implementation steps. You know, how do you implement this strategy? Uh, so those uh, uh, five steps and you could say they're control points or leverage points, sometimes I call them. Um, so, and as uh, uh, it's written the title of my slide, you know, as a former Chinese leader, Deng Xiaoping said, uh, you cross the river by 
touching the stones. Uh, well, these are the stones. Uh, so, so, uh, and finally, analysis, measuring progress and loop back to step one to continuously op optimize. So I, I very quickly, I will very quickly take you through these steps. Um, you can read on the slides and you'll get a copy of the slides. I won't, I won't explain everything. So step one, as I just said already, strategy. Keep in mind that maintenance, I'm talking about maintenance, but maintenance is often more about HSC, safety, environmental compliance, risk management. So the impact of maintenance rather than just technical work. Okay, so that's important to understand this. So from, from, from step one, even if it's a strategic, you know, like a consulting exercise, we already use our digital tools, those you see on the screen, to help illustrate the concepts, the methodologies, because perhaps our technical teams, your technical teams are not familiar with those concepts and it helps to have a practical system to look at to better understand. So system as a training tool. Then step two, step two, we call it know your assets. And in particular, which asset is critical for your process, for your business in terms of HSE. And then they will be the, the priority for you. Um, so by the way, more and more companies invest in, in uh, so-called BIM models, 3D BIM models, which contain asset data. And they, but you found that they very seldom use the models after construction is finished. So this, this second step actually gives us a very good opportunity to, to change that and to, to actually use the data in, in a model, like in a BIM model. And we do, we do this a lot. Uh, and then physically tagging assets, as you can see on the picture, maybe with a QR code or NFC tag or FID tag uh, is, is a very visual way and in the plant to show that the assets has been inventorized as part of the 4.0 system and that they have been included in your strategy. So I, again, I just touch on, on a few things here. I, I don't go into, into details. So know your assets based on which you are going to uh, uh, work on, on, on plans, maintenance plans. So it's mostly about preventive maintenance, avoiding problems. Preventive maintenance includes inspections, regular inspections, regular checks, regulatory checks, audits, all these kind of, of planned activities. It also includes the so-called predictive maintenance. And, and uh, Patrice has talked about this because they, they, they specialize in this and they, we are working uh, with them on this as, as well. So 4.0 quite often is about predictive maintenance, but, but too often, you know, it's like magic. Again, magic AI based on IoT data and wah, 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 and it's, the system is going to do things for you. Very often, a problem is that this, this uh, application uh, of for so-called predictive maintenance is disconnected from the maintenance strategy, uh, which is which is obviously a problem. So one supplier we've worked with uh, uh, in terms of sensors and technologies is uh, Aquem and, and uh, so, so Patrice company, and we interconnect our system and our approach. As you can see, our, our approach is quite is quite uh, uh, compatible. We share a similar uh, philosophy. But okay, I won't go deeper into predictive maintenance. Patrice has done it, but then don't forget. People. Maintenance in the end is done by people. Okay, they do things in the plant, they repair, they carry out inspections, preventive maintenance, uh, and they, they, they carry out in, in inspections and they make decisions. Okay, so people. Uh, that brings me to the execution. So, and then you can see, uh, you can see why I talk about people, but execution, you know, execution is so important, of course. Uh, your people, your maybe your subcontractors, uh, you know, do they do as they we you said you will do in, in the strategy? Uh, this is usually the weak point. Execution of people are the weak points. We 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 rely on people, uh, especially in the, in the industry. Uh, even and especially if you have a very beautiful, highly automated, robotized plant, you actually rely more on people. You rely more on, on skills of the people, advanced skills, which are hard to find. You rely on, on people following the right procedure, for following the right methodology, making the right judgment. So, and you all face questions like, uh, has the preventive maintenance job actually been done? Has the right spare parts been used? Uh, does that, that checklist where everybody, everything is yes, 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 does that checklist reflect the reality in the plot. This is a very typical question. So how to ensure compliance is, is, is the most 
challenging because it's, it's people-based. So we have actually developed very specific applications, in particular mobile, mobile application for this purpose. And some clients use smart glasses as well. I, I won't talk about this, but you see a picture. The photos here are from one of our clients in Thailand. So the system is of course available in Thai and very easy to use by production operators and, 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 and technicians. Again, uh, people and execution. Step five, measuring progress based on the clear KPIs, which are aligned with your goals, using data to make decisions and to define improvement actions. So this is of course related to the BOI incentives for which you will you may need to demonstrate uh, energy savings, for example, uh, or other points of compliance. Uh, you will need to demonstrate to the government uh, environmental compliance and so on. Uh, this is typically a key goal in, in our projects. And here I wrote, uh, uh, touching is believing. So we actually like to incorporate touch screens in, in our systems because it really helps people to, to go and look, touch, their data, you know, the boss comes, we tell the boss, look, this is not just a beautiful KPI, you can touch and, you know, answer questions. And you use touch screens to actually uh, help people to interact with each other uh, uh, and to make, to make decisions based on true data from, from the field. Um, so it's actually the technology like touch screen is, is, is easily available today, uh, but the question is how to actually use it. And this is something we, we do in, in every project. So all this comes together to, to what I, what I call closing the ISO 55000 loop. So based on data from the field, from people, sometimes from IoT, you know, you can measure and make decisions and based on true, on proven, proven data. Um, and in most uh, 4.0 projects, this is not achieved. Uh, so that's why you see many projects where you have very beautiful systems, very advanced, probably very expensive as well, but people don't use it. And often failure is blamed on people. So, you know, the system was very good, but your people, they are not mature enough. You know, I think many of you in the, in the corporate world have, have heard this a lot. And I think this is a totally wrong thinking and wrong design of the project. I think the goal of the project is, must be to close the loop and to have people using it. So people with their, with their shortcomings. So you have people, they are not perfect. I'm not perfect, you are not perfect, okay? Uh, we have shortcomings in terms of skills, in terms of experience, we are getting a little bit old, we are not used to this or that technology. Our, not everyone can be an IT expert, so our project must be designed with, with the people at, at the center, okay? And once the, once the loop is closed, you can build up and, and improve. That, that's very much what, what we do. And this approach I, I described, you know, roughly um, works. Uh, here I just put some uh, uh, some numbers, some some charts here, but you don't need to read it. But I, I mean, I'd be happy to share more details for those interested. But it's it's we have Bureau Veritas to uh, as a third party to audit our, our customer satisfaction, and and you, you see, you know, we we monitor you know industrial improvement, and we we get good results again with this approach I just described, combining consulting ISO fifty five thousand and, and systems in terms of industrial results. So when we say 61%, when McKinsey says 65%, 61% of uh, 4.0 projects fail, what they mean is they, they fail to achieve uh, uh, benefits for companies or they fail to be used by, by people. And this is really what we, we try to address, what we address. So I, I, what I described here is what we do in every project. So it is a kind of case study. I describe, but I'll show you a few a few clients, and I picked a few of our Thailand customers uh, and a few outside of Thailand to, to illustrate this very very quickly. And the first is is Dynamic. Uh, I won't describe, I won't read what's written on the slides, but they had it's it's a uh, it's a Japanese invested company in Thailand. It was our first project in Thailand a few years back, and they, they initially had had purchased what I call a cheap cheap maintenance system. Uh, uh, and of course they were not using it and they were making no progress. So that system made no difference compared to Excel and, and, and all paper. And we, we changed that as you can see, I, I won't go into details of the project, but you, you see we totally reversed the, the situation in terms of, of maintenance and reliability in, in about six months, which is quite typical of, of projects, I, I think. And later they deployed the same project with us in their Chinese plants. So it, it, it's a good, uh, it's, it's actually a good case study um, Essilor is a, is a kind of reversed situation because we started in China uh, and then we extended, extended into Laos and then um, in Cambodia, then in Thailand. Um, 
And, and again, we focused on, on quick improvement of plant performance. And you see, you see the numbers here that this was for the, for the Chinese plants, the first one. And then, you know, everything, everybody got motivated and then we, we, we continued the, 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 the project. Uh, when we came into Thailand, they were also using a, a local, like a work order system uh, without the right consulting support and, and without the right approach. Again, there was not much benefits of such a system. So we, 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 again, we changed the trend and we, we focused on, on industrial benefits uh, also for the Thailand plant. So it's, it's, an, it's an, a typical example. Here I have two, two cases um, of projects where we involved during the construction of the new plant. And this is the best time to ensure maintenance readiness, to train your team to work right from the start. So I, the, the objective is the system is up and running around commissioning stage. And this is really the best you can do. And especially when you invest in a plant, you have quite big capex available. And, 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 uh, and, and then this is the time when the suppliers give you data and this is a very good time to work. And then you get incentives for, from BOI as well. So ideally this is, this is the way to start. Um, this is Chambery Clean Energy. I think it's a very well-known project. So joint venture with multiple stakeholders. Each stakeholders had needs, constraints, habits, which were quite different. Uh, overall, very nice project, very nice team, and we are still working with them on, on, a continu on continuous improvement after, after several years. Uh, very, very nice, uh, very beautiful plant. Uh, um, uh, another very similar project, a plastic recycling plant, so another environmental project. Uh, most of the project done remotely due to COVID-19, unfortunately, uh, but it was quite efficient. So just to say here, I won't go into details, but it, it was quite efficient for us to work remotely, but frankly, we prefer to come on site and spend time with, with nice people. Um, but that was another example where we built the, the system during, during construction uh, to be ready for startup. And I, I wanted to show you an example in, in China, but because this is AstraZeneca, it's a famous company, and they took, this company took advantage of a new pharmaceutical wastewater plant to implement a digital twin for o and uh, uh, with us. And for, for a company like AstraZeneca and for many of your companies, big multinationals, it is very hard to introduce a new system on the, on the main process because you have your, your, your corporate IT, your existing vendors uh, worldwide, uh, and it, it's, it's very hard to navigate uh, uh, these. So instead, you know, they took the opportunity of, the, of this new wastewater plant uh, to do like a kind of smaller scale project in a way uh, to get us in and then to expand. And this is a very practical way to start a project, uh, uh, which, we, uh, which, which we've used in many, in many other, other projects. Um, so I don't go, again, I don't go into details, but it's a very environmental uh, a driven project. It's, uh, it's a wastewater plant for a pharmaceutical process. So you can imagine it's very sensitive. And in China, the environmental regulation is very strict. Uh, and this is happening all elsewhere. And I know in Thailand, the regulations uh, have become uh, very strict as well. Um, yeah, I won't talk about this one, but we have, just to say, we have clients all over Southeast Asia. So this is in Malaysia. We have projects in Indonesia, in Laos, in Singapore, in Brunei, uh, well, all over, all over the place. Um, and I will conclude with this one. Um, just because for us, it's a very uh, recent project. We signed this project uh, um, three months ago. Uh, it's a very large project, so really one of our largest. It's a full digital twin for a large infrastructure in Hong Kong. It's an environmental infrastructure. You can see it's a power plant. Uh, it's a waste to energy plant. It's built by a Singaporean company, Kepol Infrastructure, big, big Singaporean company. Uh, um, a very, it's a very good, very good client. And I skipped the details. You can, you can read it when you, when you get a copy of the slides, but it's, it's again a project driven by environmental regulation, regulatory reporting, the, the ministry, uh, the, what, what they call the Environmental Protection Department have access to the system. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's an example of a very large scale project, again, built during the construction of, of the plant and it connects to all kinds of subsystems with sensors. Uh, uh, so for, for uh, predictive maintenance purposes. Again, I don't go, I cannot go into details in this short, short presentation. So I will conclude, we give you a few takeaways. Um, first, I would say, don't worry about 0.0, don't get stuck with that name. Uh, think industry of the future. And this is the French way of thinking. We're very proud of it. And I think it's very suitable for us in, in Asia. Um, well, we should utilize, uh, for Thailand, we should utilize the BOI incentives. 
uh, for, for funding, extra funding for your projects, it helps a lot to start projects, as, as Kun Kampon said, and also to help align your, your goals, your company goals, your project goals with, with the government goals. Because in the end, we are here to, you know, to work with the government for, for the people in the country. Um, use ISO 55000 to drive the, the project, to drive the digital project. And this is, you know, the stones in the water, as, 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 as Dan Xiaoping was saying, you know, to move a step by step uh, uh, to, to adjust as you go. There's no magic, there's no big bong, big bong ma magic. You have, to, you have to move based on your constraints, your capability, your needs. And this is what uh, our, our, our methodology helps us to do. Uh, if possible, take advantage of a new construction. If you're building something, uh, an extension, a wastewater plant like AstraZeneca did in, in, in Thailand or a, a totally new plant is the good time. Uh, and maybe we should talk and finally, focus on people, not machines. Okay, in the end, it's about people. Uh, don't blame people for failure, as as McKinsey did in their report. Uh, 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 don't blame people for failure. We, you know, we 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 all make mistakes. We cannot be perfect. You cannot uh, hire perfect people. Your competitors will grab them anyway for a higher salary. So instead, design design up. We can design our project to, around our people, and. Well, what can we do next? Uh, uh, it would be a pity to listen to, to stories like this and not to take a next step. Um, so I, I would say you, you uh, two things. We have a Thailand ecosystem and now uh, we, we welcome to, to use a Thailand ecosystem and, and uh, especially university and other partners to work with you. And then we have this uh, a little benchmarking. You can see here is a QR code and you, you have the link. We are doing a benchmarking and here it would be interesting for you to benchmark with companies in China, actually. We have a database of over a thousand companies. There's a questionnaire. It's a little bit a complete questionnaire, but it takes about 10 minutes. A plant manager could, could take the questionnaire. A maintenance manager could also do it, but they probably they need to help each other. You can have two people responding and we can, we can cross check. And uh, we, can help, we can share the, the result and uh, maybe show your position, how you position in the market in terms of, of maintenance. Uh, uh, and and uh, and we can say we will send you the 2022 report, which will come out a few months a few months later. Uh, but as the end of my presentation, and uh, please don't hesitate to to contact me directly. Uh, my WeChat contact is there. Uh, there's my colleague Stanley. He's the friendly guy on the photo here. Uh, I also look friendly, right? Uh, he has a line contact, so it might be more convenient for some of you. He's worked in Thailand for for quite a while, although he's currently in Shanghai with me. Um, as I said, 4.0, it's, it's, you know, people's business. We are friendly. We like to talk to other friendly people. Um, so so don't, don't hesitate to come back to us with questions, of course, in the chat, but, but also later. And that said, you know, thank you. Thank you very much. And we welcome your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno, for this uh, very uh, dynamic uh, presentation and I really like the, the, the picture. Huh? If after that they don't uh, <laughs> come to Civeco. No, so thank you very much. I think it was interesting to have your 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 vision and your feedback on the fact that you think uh, we have to be careful not to put the 4.0 like a software brochure but to 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 stay in that uh, industry of the of the future and also the the point is, and it's true because there are a lot of incentives on uh, on equipment but to to think also how do we bring people to this uh, to this 4.0 uh, um so we have one uh, one question uh, which is the process for whom who has a project uh, to promote to to boi so maybe this one is more for kun kan pong well, what is the process and and myself i wanted to add also what are the timelines to to present a project uh, uh, how long before do we need to present it and after how long does it take to 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 be uh, effective uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, well, let, let, let me clarify the question a little bit. I think, I think for BOI, uh, I guess the first question is for who, right? For who is for, uh, we, I, I touch upon both sides, the demand side and the supply side, right? The demand side, our promotion is for people who actually are doing business right now and are producing uh, man of, in manufacturing or providing service that's in our eligible list. There are like 400 of them. Uh, I, can, I can 
provide you with the guides later so you can you know match see whether it's possible or not uh and that's so that's for who uh that that'll be eligible uh generally so basically say if you're a manufacturer of uh say auto parts electronic parts pcba chemicals uh you're probably among one of the eligible one that can apply for this you know uh the out promotion uh the other side is the manufacturer of the system so that's people providing you know uh system uh, software or you know um, the hardware to to upgrade you know uh, for for other people so that's for who um i i guess i'm not sure whether i get that uh question correctly as and the process i think i think the question was not only uh who who can apply it's also what is the process so if if a company is that is in that eligible list okay how how should they proceed and what is the process maybe not going to the whole the detail but roughly how 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 should they proceed sure 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 i think i think i would divide that that to two parts so um as I say, I, I tried to simplify my, my presentation, but there's a lot of details we have to talk about. So the first step is maybe to prepare some information of who you are, what you do, what you wanna do, then talk to us via Zoom, via the BOI clinic, right? Uh, to, to talk about specific of what you're doing. So that's the first step. And then when you kind of get the idea that you can move forward, then the application uh, can, be down, uh, can be done online. Uh, and also can be submitted at the office as well. So you can go to boi.go.th and there should be, you know, application portal portal in, in the website that you can, you know, create your account and do almost everything online. Uh, and for the demand side, the efficiency of uh, enhancement measure, you can download the, uh, the PDF form and submit it at our head office in Bangkok. And okay. after, after you submit the application, then we will review it. We were going to have an interview and then we're, we're going to give you results afterward, which take around like two to three months. Uh, it's not to scare you, but the, the overall idea is that you submit, do an interview, we give you results two to three months, depending on the details, the, the sophistication of the system. Uh, but if you cannot wait, you can submit the application, talk to us, and then start, you know, you know installing and uh, processing the, the investment process in parallel with, uh, with, uh, with the application approval process. But that's in details we have to talk about later, but it's totally possible. Okay, so thank you. I think we will uh, send the presentation to the to the to the participant and also the link to the, the BOI portal so that uh, companies can uh, register directly. So I have uh, two other uh, question. Another one um, says uh, Mr. Lopito talked about cheap local uh, CMMS. I agree with these comments as we have one of them. Can Civeco provide consulting service to help us improve this existing system or do we need to install yours? Uh, it's, it's, uh, thanks, it's uh, somehow it's a good question. It's not an easy one to answer. Um, let me see, we, we did like we did, um, well, what comes to my mind, if, and as an example, is we did an an, an audit, maintenance audit, uh, recently in a in a in a in for big uh, construction material producer, the, the big Swiss company with many plants, and they had one of those systems. I mean, they have really many uh, what I call cheap. I don't. I hope I don't offend anyone, but cheap, cheap software suppliers like this, and they, they had this one of those systems that cost about. Um, the equivalent of 500 USD per year uh, uh, system for the plant. So that, that's how cheap it was. And we did an audit and our audit costed maybe 12 or 15,000 US dollar. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not answering your question here, but I'm just showing this. Sometimes there's a mismatch between, uh, um, you know, the, the needs, the size of the needs, which are somehow related to the size of your company and the complexity of your process and, and the solutions that companies are, are using. We, we try to size our projects based on a return of investment, one year, one year and a half, which, which is quite fast. Uh, uh, you know, if the system is, you know, 10 times cheaper than this, you know, 
it, it probably there's a mismatch. It's probably something not 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 logical, and um, it doesn't really answer. But you know, it's it's so that's the first the first question. You know, if you have a very small plant, and and uh, or maybe it's, it's, so I don't know because there's no no name here for the for the the person who has the question. But if your plant is very small, maybe maybe that small system is is match in terms of size. Otherwise, uh, uh, probably not, and and probably we would we would we would it probably makes more sense to bring in a new system. Knowing that if we do consulting, and it will be quite expensive consulting compared to the cost of that software. The numbers I gave you, you know, actually they're quite shocking. Uh, it's in the system. In theory, the system supplier they could improve their system, but actually cheap systems are usually designed for convenience. They don't go in depth. They don't help with compliance, and if if to try to develop those things actually it's very complex. It's very expensive, and it will just it will just kill that supplier to try to develop such su such a system. So improving a system like this is, is is actually very very hard. So generally, the I, my answer would be no. Uh, we would need to um, yes or no, depending on how the question was asked. But you know, we would need to replace and, and bring, we would bring up bring in our, our our own system. But we would look at the ROI before. And, uh, but look, we could, uh, I mean, I'm happy to get uh, to, to know more about what, what, are, what are the actual needs uh, of your company. And, and we should see, you know, different companies, different situations that we may, maybe there's something we can do. That would be my answer. Okay, thank you, Bruno. So yeah, you, 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 you maybe need to get in touch with, uh, with Bruno to, if you need more, more answer. Uh, a last question before we, 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 we resume because we are already a bit late. Maybe uh, this one I can ask uh, Patrice to help us on this one. So as you know, uh, the industrial 4.0 world already came into uh, SEA a while, but of course, in some companies or the top management of the company are not convenient to change because of the cost and the staff are the old generation and so on. So how do you convince them to change? Ah, this is more change management question. Uh, um, yeah, but it's also linked to uh, what I explained, uh, the challenges as well. Okay, uh, first, yeah, let's say for point zero, Ministry of the Future, whatever we call it, it's change, indeed, change management. But the whole idea of um, transitioning to digitalization is not to, to spend money, it's to save money. So top management, usually, uh, if they understand the concept, they know that what we are trying to do is reduce costs, reduce costs of failure, reduce costs of energy, reduce costs of... So, of course, it's an investment, or it's not an investment, thanks to BOI incentive, or thanks to going as an operational expense, as I mentioned today. The whole idea is return on investment, like Bruno mentioned just before. So, that will be you have to get people able to explain that to top management with real numbers, with uh, the real value of return investment. I mentioned total cost of ownership, which is a very important um, thing to understand as well. Um, as uh, the elder people in a management position, yes, yes, it's a problem sometimes. <laughs> I agree, we've, done, we've all been faced with that. Um, I cannot say I'm young uh, as well, but, um, I think the generation which was very reluctant of this new technology, digitalization, and uh, going to the industry of the future is now phasing out. And the people at the management level decision, they understand that very well. And I would say that thanks to the BOI push, but also thanks for the, to the Federation of Thai Industries um, speeches and seminar they organize, uh, we have two high level uh, government organization in Thailand pushing for it and educating people. So we have to use this platform as well and use their, uh, their trainings to be able to get the top management we are not yet transitioning into digital to understand it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Patrice. But so, yes, it may be uh, always a challenge, but uh, I think with a return on investment analysis, it's the best way to talk to 
management sometimes. Uh, so time for me to resume this session. I would like to uh, really uh, thank all our panelists, uh, Kun Kwan Pong, uh, Patrice and uh, Bruno. Thank you very much uh, for, for uh, taking your time to explain all of us. I, I wanted uh, maybe to, to share with the participants uh, in a few minutes uh, just uh, the, the upcoming events of the Franco Thai uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so um, we have uh, soon the Fête de la Musique on the 21st of June. So for those who don't know, it's a, a specific uh, French uh, tradition, but now it's becoming European and now we are trying to convince uh, Thais about this, uh, this nice tradition. It's an evening where we celebrate music and so a lot of musicians are coming to, to come and play and have a good moment. So really I encourage uh, if you want to, to participate, don't hesitate to go on our website. Um, and after uh, it's our month with Vio, we will have a workshop with BOI at the end of the month. We are really trying to work together on uh, leveraging uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, how to say, and, and encouraging uh, investment in Thailand. So we have the common mission on that. So we are going to do a workshop. So this will be a, a format that it will be a bit, uh, uh, let's say, smaller, but with uh, direct discussions of uh, experts of BOI on three uh, specific sectors, one on agri-agro smart farming, one on the smart visa, uh, and the last one on digital and startup ecosystem. Uh, so this will be on the 23rd of June. And after next month, we will have an HR uh, workshop, uh, date be confirmed should be on the 7th of July, uh, how to find and develop engineers. So a bit related to the topic today, we know uh, that it's a, a topic to find uh, the correct uh, talents and after uh, how, to, um, how to manage a retention of those, uh, those talents. And after this is an event that is in a while, but I think sometimes uh, um, some of you may be interested because they are related uh, topics. We are going to, to organize uh, uh, this year again, so it has been organized uh, during four or uh, uh, five uh, previous years, uh, a sustainability, uh, sustainable for business forum. And uh, this year the topic is uh, uh, technology as an enabler and the, the subtopic are green construction, agri and food innovation and uh, digitalization so it will be on the 11th of october we have time to to see for that but don't hesitate to reach out to us if you are interested by any of this uh, topic and if you are a company in france uh, having a look at this webinar because you are potentially interested by by business in thailand don't hesitate to reach out to us we can uh, propose um, all kinds of business services uh, to find partners locally, distributors. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a business center to, to host you, so don't hesitate to, to reach out as well. So, if I may put uh, my cap of uh, political chamber for just five seconds. Mm. <laughs> um, there's one you mentioned because it's not yet finalized, but I think it, it will uh, interest everybody uh, attending today. We are working with uh, the Federation of Thai Industry to do uh, uh, um, a business matchmaking between uh, companies dealing with um, new industry, I mean, industry of the future, smart industry, <laughs> and in Thailand and in France. So uh, that should happen in the near future. So stay tuned. That will be, uh, I hope, also very interesting as this one was. So um, this one will be more directly for matchmaking and to decide uh, for the, the companies who could work together on both sides of, um, of the gear, basically. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrice. So now I uh, I thank you, um, and we will uh, send to you the presentation and the contacts if you want to to uh, go more deeper in the, the the this industry of the the, the future. And uh, and yes, and uh, good luck to all of you with your with your project and uh, and have a good evening or a good day in France. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.